So today I'd like to tell you about uh, chemical cocktails and whether we can predict the effect of chemical cocktails. My name is Nina Sidegreen and I come from the Department of Plant and Environmental Science uh, here at the Faculty of Science. So chemical cocktails, what's the problem? Um, we are all surrounded by chemicals, we eat chemicals, we consist of chemicals ourselves, so um, what is the problem about these cocktails? The thing is that some of the chemicals can have a negative effect of us and if we are exposed to many of those that can have a negative effect they might all accumulate to levels uh, where they affect us uh, in a problematic way. But to understand how to assess whether uh, chemicals are a problem we have to first look at how uh, the problem is assessed if we only look at a sim single chemical. So how do we assess whether a chemical is a problem? We do that through uh, risk assessment. Risk assessment consists of uh, three components. Um, one is uh, to understand the toxicity of a certain compound. Then we need to understand um, if we get exposed and to what extent we get exposed. And uh, jointly, uh, the probability of exposure and the concentration of exposure expresses uh, the risk uh, of a chemical. The toxicity of a chemical, um, we determine using uh, dose response curves. Uh, Parcello said that uh, all is a poison, is a poison and nothing is a poison, it's a dose alone that makes a poison. Um, so whether something is poisonous or toxic depends on the dose. And we uh, get these relationships by taking some organism, a cell, or other living thing, and we expose it to increasing doses of uh, our toxicant, and then we look uh, at a response. That could be survival, it could be growth, it could be uh, the expression of different enzymes or hormones. And at low doses, you'll see that there's hardly no effect, but at a certain uh, threshold, we start to get a negative effect of the uh, endpoint we're measuring. So uh, to go back to the cocktail effects uh, and remembering uh, the little dose response curve, most of us uh, know or have experienced that uh, a little dose of cocktail is just uh, great, can be all fun, but if you get too much of the cocktail, you can actually get some uh, really severe effects. So how do we um, predict these effects? Could this girl actually have predicted uh, where she ended up uh, if she had calculated a bit? Well, one th way of doing it is measuring, which is done down there. You simply measure the toxicity of your cocktail. But considering the amount of different chemical cocktails that can be made out of all the chemicals that we surround ourselves by, that is just an impossible task to do uh, on everything. So therefore, uh, we um, need to go and do calculations. The most used cocktail uh, model is the um, concentration addition model. It acts after a very simple assumption that all chemicals act as dilutions of each other. Then uh, if they simply act as dilutions of each other, you can convert all of them to the same unit, add them up, and from that added uh, amount of chemical, calculate the toxicity. This is uh, shown here uh, in an example of uh, two uh, beverages with different uh, toxicities. Up here we have uh, no effect. The guy performs 100%. He does that for a certain time, but then if he drinks whiskey at a certain time, he'll, his performance will start to go down to, to approximately zero. You get a similar curve uh, if the guy drinks beer, but it is shifted tenfold uh, to the left, and that is because beer is um, tenfold less toxic. It has an alcohol percentage that is tenfold less than uh, the whiskey. So then if we give the guy a cocktail of, say, one unit of uh, whiskey and five units of beer, then he'll get half the effect from the whiskey, half the effect from the beer. Then we can predict how he will behave uh, giving this cocktail. And you can do that for all kinds of mixture ratios and actually also for an infinite amount, uh, amounts of chemicals. That's a very simple model. So one could ask uh, oneself whether it actually works. And uh, this famous statistician, uh, George Box, has um, made this quote that all models are wrong, but some are useful. And this one uh, definitely is wrong. Very few chemicals live up to the assumptions that beer and whiskey do. Um, but studies of more than a thousand tested chemical combinations show that in approximately 90% of the cases, 
the model could describe uh, the toxicity within a twofold uh, uncertainty. So that's actually quite good. So then what do we use them for? One of the things we use it for, uh, the models for are risk assessment of, uh, of different cases. One could be a risk assessment of a product. If you look at the new uh, EU registration uh, of chemicals or legislation called REACH, uh, all products have to um, come with a description of the potential toxicity. That toxicity is calculated using this model and the knowledge of the toxicity of the different chemicals that the, comp uh, the, the product is uh, composed of. Also, we can do it for pollution sources and we can actually do it for all kinds of measured um, chemical combinations. So the exposure out there, if that is measured combinations, we can go in and we can estimate what is the risk uh, of that combination. So one example here is, for example, a girl that puts on makeup that contain maybe parabens that are known to be endocrine disruptive. So you can use hairspray. So you could uh, eat popcorn that has fluorinated compounds in, uh, in the back. Um, she's exposed to brominated flame retardants uh, from her computer. And she might also eat some natural estrogens uh, from, for example, soybeans. So if you take a blood sample, then you can go and use the concentration dish model and knowledge about endocrine disruptivity for example, and assess whether she's exposed to risk or whether she isn't. Also, if you think the concentrations she has in her blood are critical, you can go in and then quantify which of these sources are the most important ones in uh, giving this risk. And then you can go and try to see if you can uh, lower uh, the influence of that source. Also, we uh, use it if we want to know whether we're actually measuring the right chemicals. In Denmark and EU, we're very focused on having a good water quality, both groundwater and surface water, and we spend an immense amount of money uh, monitoring uh, the water and measuring different kinds of chemicals. So then we can use our uh, mixture toxicity model and all the chemicals that we find in our groundwater, we add them up and we calculate what is the expected toxicity of the water. Then we can measure the actual toxicity of the water. And if we have a very big difference between what we expect and what we measure, then we most likely have chemicals out there that are toxic, but that we don't measure. Uh, that has been done recently for wastewater in Australia, and they were monitoring 360 different chemicals, pesticides, um, antibiotics, all kinds of chemicals that they thought were relevant in this wastewater. But when they compared the joint toxicity of everything they measured to the toxicity of the wastewater itself, the joint toxicity of what they measured only could explain less than 5%, and in some cases, even less than 1% of the joint toxicity of the wastewater. So that's a very strong indication that there are chemicals in that wastewater that they do not monitor for, but that has an immense um, toxicity um, compared to uh, what, they, what they predict. So uh, I said that the model goes uh, and explains toxicity very well in about 90% of the cases, but there's still 10% left. And in those cases, we have either synergy or antagony. That means that the chemicals interact. So either you get a larger effect than predicted by your model, that's what we call synergy, or you get a smaller effect than predicted by the reference model, and that's antagony. If we look at our little guy here, synergy would be if he actually gets drunk much faster than we predict. Um, getting his cocktail, and the antagony would be if he needs to drink even more of the cocktail than we would predict uh, to get the effect. So uh, these synergistic and antagonistic uh, cases and interactions between chemicals are uh, one of, of the topics uh, to understand the mechanisms behind that in uh, our research group. So uh, what we do is that we expose our um, critter to uh, different combinations of chemicals that we know interact and then we try to understand how they affect the uptake of each other and the metabolization of each other uh, and the damage that they cause, maybe recovery. And since I work in ecotoxicology, we also work with dynamic exposures and we want not only to see what the effect is on single individuals but also on populations and uh, to extrapolate that to environmental effects. But to turn back to the original question, chemical cocktails, can we predict the effect? The uh, answer is uh, yes, we can. And for these few cases where we can't, uh, we're definitely working on it. 
So with that, I'll say thank you for your attention.